Okie dokie. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome to this live. Um, I think I'm live now. Guys, I'm excited. This is Sunday evening and I'm so excited because I'm going to share with you what I'm cooking for dinner. Let me show you my face a little bit. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I want to show you, share with you what I'm cooking for dinner. And I just got recently this OPO squash, O-P-O-R, long squash. And the reason why I wanted to cook this squash is because um, my mom used to make it with saltfish. And so it leaves back lingering memories. And so I've been for years wanting to cook it. And I just saw it lately in the supermarket and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna get it and I'm gonna create recipes with it. So this is Opo squash. And I'm so excited. I'm, but the thing is, I'm gonna curry it. I'm gonna curry it. I'm gonna make a curry. So I'm not gonna be on camera much today. Um, so you just follow along with me and welcome. My name is Michelle Blackwood. I'm so excited to be here. And we're going to be cooking Opera Squash. Please subscribe to my channel and leave your comments below and share this video. And come on in as I cook Opera Squash. And I think they also call it calabash. It's from the same family, but it's not the hard shell calabash. Let me show you my calabash. This is my calabash. So, okay, so calabash, this is made from... Calabash. not the same thing so um probably it is <laughs> same family then so also check out my one of my latest posts on my website healthiersteps.com where i talk about um long squash you can get all everything about long squash so there's a post on my site if you want to read more about it health benefits and all so let me get started so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna chop this squash up for you. What did I do with my knife? Here's my knife, okay, let's go. So leave in the comment below where you're from and let's get started. I washed the vegetables already. I got them prepped and so they're already washed. So let's just, okay, let's just get ready, let's go. So. Let's see. There it is. See what it looks like. I'm just going to cut the top and the tail. And we're just going to go. I mean, we can do slices. There's a little spot there. I'm going to get rid of that. Any other little spot, I'm going to get rid of it. The skin is a little bit firm, hard, I would say. But the flesh is really soft. So let's cut. Let's cut. Oh, very soft. So I'm going to do a curry with it because I love the curry vegetables. <laughs> I just love curry vegetables. And I'm going to curry it and put some carrots with it. I think that would be great. So I'm making slices at first. And you know what? You can just go down halfway and see what the, the middle is. And the seeds are soft enough. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and... I'm just going to go ahead and include the seeds why not more protein because seeds have protein so why not it's in the entire squash it's from the cucumber family or i mean this is squash they're from like cucumbers pumpkin zucchini they're all from the same family so they're actually fruits you know because they have a seed inside so this is a fruit but you're gonna eat it cooked and more than likely it can be eaten raw then seeing that it is like a cucumber and a zucchini which are both eaten raw but i didn't taste it do you think i should taste it <laughs> i think i will mm, it tastes very good mm, reminded me it reminds me of chayote chocho so it's like chocho and guys, that's the first time I'm trying it. It tastes just like chocho to me. And chocho or chayote 
is also from the same family. So it tastes really good. So it could make like a coast, like a, yeah, like a slaw, grated into a slaw. So that's a whole lot. This can feed a family of four. Yeah, that's a whole lot. By the time that cooks down, you're gonna get a lot from it. So tell me where you're from. Thank you for watching. I'm happy you're here. Thank you, thank you for joining us. I'm now doing my carrots. And I, I love the carrots because of the color. It adds a beautiful color. So and you're just gonna chop wherever you wanna dice, it's up to you. I'm just adding it for the contrast in color and for the vitamin A, the carotenoids in it. And I don't need all this onion, so I'm just gonna do half of onion. Should be enough. I'm just gonna do big chops. All right, well, let's see what I'm doing. Just gonna chop it up. Okay, so I'm getting onions. When I'm doing a curry, my base is, and everyone's base is probably different. I like onion. And then I'm gonna do my garlic. So I'm doing about three cloves, more even merrier. More cloves the merrier. So I'm here I'm doing about just chopping them up. Mince is even better. All right, so I have my onion, my garlic. Next, I'm doing my green onions or scallion. Love this. Love this stuff. And I just chop it any way you want it. Sometimes I even leave them big chunks and just add them for flavor. It's also good. And I have some thyme here. And here I have like a seasoned pepper. It's not hot, it just has nice flavor. So I'm gonna add this as well to my curry. Just love the paper the flavor of this pepper and I'm planning to grow it. So I only have one left unless I go to the store this week and hopefully I can find more at the store. So what else I'm gonna put? I'm gonna use vegetable broth. I'm using I'm using chief curry powder. Also if you have better pack that's good as well. And I'm gonna add some pimento pimento berries and that will make it more like a Caribbean style curry. So I'm just gonna shift things. And here is my, I'm drinking some sugar cane juice in the meantime with, with lemon, with pink lemon, so delicious. Fresh sugar cane juice. Mm. When you live in Florida, so good. So I'm just shifting over now and I'm bring the, the pot so I can cook. So just give me a second while I shift around things and make more space. But I'm glad you can come and join me here on this live. Welcome, welcome to our live. My name is Michelle Blackwood again. If you're just joining, please subscribe. I'll be sharing with you lots more recipes. I've been cooking vegan for over 22 years. My daughter is 22, I go by her age. That's when we made the shift, my husband and I. At the end of this month, we'll be married for 25 years and we both started the journey together. It's so much better when you have support and you start the journey with family and loves one. It makes life easier. Because I can't imagine how difficult it is sometimes to be cooking two, three different pots. I mean, sometimes I do that because my kids have different taste preferences. So be, to be honest, my, my 12, he's gonna be 12 too next week. He is, he cooks. My daughter cooks, so it makes life easier. But of lately, my son wants me to cook. So like today I made, <laughs> I made quinoa rice and peas. Quinoa rice, quinoa with peas. For Sunday dinner, make it like I'm making a rice and peas. And he said, mom, can you make one separate for me with rice, rice? So when I'm done, I'm going to cook for him. 
a separate dish. You'll have it for days. But my husband and I like we like our we like the quinoa instead of rice. So the next thing I have to do is plug in. Because we, we break down this set. So now for the weekend, so I'm gonna put in plug in so I can get the stove on. So bear with me. I'm coming, I'm coming. We break down the tripods, everything. And I didn't realize that we did, so I set it up before I started. But it's all right. There it is. Just bear with me, guys. I'm coming, I'm coming. Welcome, welcome. Share the video. Like, share, subscribe. You want to tell me this light didn't come on? Where is my plug in now? Oh, there it is. Did it come on yet? One more minute. I'm coming. Oh, there it is. I hear that beep. Did you hear the beep? That's the beep. We're in business. So, thank you, thank you. You leave a comment. Thank you. I can see we have some people on the live. We're sharing curry squash and it's long squash. So we're letting the pot heat up and I'm going to get the fan. I'm here in Florida and I'm getting hot. I'm coming back. this heat up while it's heating up i'll say hi again and the fan is cooling me down <laughs> so we're here welcome to the live i'm happy you're on and i'll be making curry long squash i love long squash as a child my mom made it with saltfish but i'm doing my own version today so let's let's do it Let's do it. All right. All right, that's good. So this is getting warm. And first we're gonna saute our onions and our garlic and all the seasonings. If you had green seasoning, it's like the blended, all of this blended, it would be perfect to add to this dish. Head on over to my website, Healthier Steps for one of the best green seasoning recipes out there that you can make have it in the refrigerator bottle and then you can use it at lip so we're getting ready now to start and this guys is all spontaneous i was cooking about to cook like i said i made already made a quinoa with these and i was like i'm gonna share this i'm gonna go live why not sometimes it's good to be spontaneous to not prep and have all everything ready to just cook on the spur of the moment why not why not that's what life should be we should always you get inspired to do something don't wait i'm a strong believer in not waiting to perfect things before you do it just get out there do it the more you do it the better you're gonna get so i always say this is there any ideas that you have out there that you're sitting on and you're letting it cook and 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 <laughs> and, and get you know just let it there boil and boil and cook just go out and do it get to it do it sometimes i like to what you call burn your curry first 
But I'm using a really strong curry. If you've never tried the chief curry from Trinidad, it is very strong. So I don't necessarily burn it separate. That's how my husband cooks curry. I kind of do it as I go along. So I'm adding my onion, try to saute the onion first, let it soften so but some of the other stuff coming, you know, you just add your veggies. You just gotta go ahead and add all the veggies. Sauteing the onion first and let it soften is always good. <coughs> let me get some of this water. Let's see. But this is good. Mm. If you never had sugar cane juice, sugar cane, the same thing, the juice of the sugar cane is so good. So delicious. I'm adding my green onions, the peppers, all the veggies I'm adding now. Variety, I'm going to turn back on the stove. Add some more oil. All right. All right, looking good. It's smelling good all over here. I'm adding some of the curry powder. I'm at about two or three tablespoons. That's good enough. Alrighty. And I'm just letting that cook until it browns. So you see the color is changing. Alrighty. And that looks really good. So next what I'm gonna do is add the squash. I'm gonna add the squash and that's a lot of squash. A lot of squash. Alrighty. And then squash the carrots. And put the stove up a little higher. And we're just gonna now. coat the squash alrighty and there's a thyme the pepper all in there alrighty they're looking so good and the next thing I'm going to add is my vegetable broth That's it. And then I'm just going to bring that to a boil. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to add this yellow curry bouillon cubes for extra flavor. You don't have to add it, but I'm going to add some. It's going to give a nice color and more flavor. 
and then I'm gonna bring it to a boil. I'm gonna cover, bring it to a boil, and then one more thing I forgot to add. I'm gonna add some of these pimento berries, about six usually, two, four, a little like six. Just add them, they'll add some extra Caribbean flavor. And then I'm gonna clean up, put away the stuff, wash my hands, and actually I'm gonna take the fan off it because now the fan is gonna let it blow. And that's basically it for this recipe. Thank you guys for joining me. I'm gonna just wash up again and put away the stuff, wash up, and then I'll be back in a second. Let me go over back to the sink again. Thank you guys for joining share this video and we're just gonna bring it to a boil it's coming it's coming it's gonna take a while but once it start boiling then we'll let it cook and that's it see if I can work this chat now okay okay thank you guys we see we have four people on four likes thank you for your likes and if you have any questions I don't know how the chat works but I'm gonna try to figure it out okay so leave leave your comments below hi everyone healthy sweet I turned vegan last year and it was the best decision ever I think so too. I'm going 22 years and I, I don't have no desire to go back. Um, I'm loving it, loving it, loving being vegan. And um, so welcome, welcome on the journey. And um, I'm sweaty. Let me, see. Let me see. Welcome. I tell you, down here in Florida, it, it takes, in no time you get hot so welcome thank you for those of you who watch this video um share it and um tell your friends about and your family about this channel again my name is michelle blackwood from healthier steps check out all my delicious recipes over there on healthier steps i have over 700 posts over there so lots of recipes are over there lots of posts are over there so check it out and they're all um vegan they're mostly with a caribbean perspective a jamaican because i was born and raised in jamaica then i left and went to england i where i did my nurse training and then i came to the united states after where i met my husband and we have two children um, my daughter Devana and my son David and my daughter Devana she's 22 and my son David will be 12 at the next week it will be his birthday so we're excited to celebrate and so so we're happy another thing is um, I always like to tell my story probably you've heard my story a million times but while we're waiting might as well I tell my story <laughs> okay so so 12 years ago and I know a lot of black women have gone through this I've heard uh, you know you probably have known of black women who um, have had a similar situation like I have so let's get this a little higher because it's still cut chopping off my head alrighty so 12 years ago I when I was pregnant, my, my daughter, I told you, is 22, so 
it took us a long while before I got we got pregnant again. So my daughter now, um, she always wanted a a, a sibling. She's always wanted um, a brother or sister. So we were so excited when um, David. I was pregnant with David, and so um, I went mostly raw then for that period. I did everything right, you would say, et right, and just was waiting for, but when I went to the, I had a midwife, and for whatever reason, my midwife, she said I was like three weeks late, and she wasn't confident in now going through the delivery process with me, so that's on the side of the store I'm adding. So she called me up one day, and she said, I need to go to the hospital because you're three weeks late. And because of your age, I was 38 at the time, I was high risk. So yeah, I'll be 50 this year. So she said, I'm high risk, so I needed to go to the hospital. That was a big let though. Like my whole system, like what? I wanted this home birth, I planned for it. I've been seeing this midwife throughout the entire process. And now she called me, sent me to the hospital. So we packed and we went, but I didn't want to go, but what else am I going to do at that point? What else? Where am I going to turn to? So it was a very lonely, dark process for my hubby and myself. So we had to make a decision. And so we said, okay, let's go to the hospital. When we got to the hospital, they were like, you're not progressing. You're in labor, but it's not progressing. And by then, mentally, everything, I was not with it. I was like completely shut down, basically. Because that's not all, what I planned for or what my dreams. But I said, you know what? Let's go with it. Because things are not progressing. And I was like, okay. Wow, what a change of events. So we ended up going through the C-section. And when I came out of the C-section, you know, I felt a lot of pain and I was like, this is weird. I'm in so much pain. I mean, excruciating pain and you know, they give you the whatever for it and everything. But then they noticed that I wasn't um, going to the bathroom like I should. And you know, they keep you for four days. So on the fourth day, they realized that my heart rate was over 170 beats per minute. Hey, David. And so, um, <laughs> so they're like, wow, something is going on majorly wrong. By then, they're getting ready to send me home, send my baby home. As a result of that, that's why I have these scars here. And I love these scars. I'll tell you more in a, in a love my scars. I wear them boldly and proudly. So they said, well, we're going to have to send the baby home. And we're going to send you for a CAT scan. And would you believe when the, the results came back, I was septic. They had cut my intestines in two places during the procedure. And guys, this is day four. And this was in Virginia. This is day four when they realized something was majorly wrong. So they're like, they don't understand why I'm still alive because they were giving me drugs now. I mean, I see you giving me drugs to try to bring my heart rate down and they were <laughs> massaging my carotid. They were doing all sorts of stuff. They were just trying to get me stabilized when they, the results came back to say that, boom, they had cut my intestine, the feces is all over in my peritoneum, and I'm septic, and they don't know how I'm alive still. So naturally, they had to get permission from my husband to run me back into the operating room to go open me back up. I remember, guys, I already have a C-section, and now they have to reopen me up. And basically, they sent the priest to give me last rites and at the bedside because they were sure there's no way medically speaking i can survive this so the surgeon who came they had to send for the surgeon the head surgeon for the hospital and when he came he basically told my husband this is in god's hand 
E, don't see how I'm going to survive either. We must just pray. And this is in God's hand. And he said, if people to pray. So my husband, that's what he did. He mobilized a lot of people to pray. Um, I believe people were, I know people were praying all over the world. Everywhere. It went out. Because it, my friend was on Facebook. I didn't even know what Facebook was at the time. And she told me later on, she was on Facebook telling everyone to pray for me. So they took me into the procedure. I know it was over six hours. And opened me back out, clean me up, flush me, you know, get, get rid of everything as they can. And the surgeon came back and told my husband, whatever your wife was eating, she must have had a healthy lifestyle because when we opened her up and went in, it was like somebody was freshly cut. There was no necrosis. Because at first he was like, maybe we're going to have to put a colostomy bag on her. You know, and my husband was like, wow, you know, that... That too could be a devastating, but whatever you do to save her, save her. But that would have been also, you know, hard, but whatever you have to do, do. So they went in, like I said, cleaned me up, did that. And he said, okay. He basically, my husband said, left me open up in the ICU with the tubes coming and on a ventilator, everything. And let's see if I survive the night. I sur survive the night. And then now what happened is they found all sort of abscesses all over my body, literally. Because your body is trying to encapsulate all that toxin, foreign material. And so they form lots of abscesses throughout the abdomen to go in one by one. So I had these JPEGs all over me. They had to go in one by one and drain them. Literally drain them one by one. And so I was in ICU for about a month because by then now, the, the thing I believe that helped me after all this to survive and to fight was the fact that my son was sent home and I'm here and I want to get reunited with my son. I wanted to be with my baby, you know? So that's what happened. I literally was um, basically fighting for my life because everything from there was touch and go for the entire month and my stay in the hospital because I had to do multiple procedures over and over again to the point where they could not get veins anymore I was they were infiltrating these are all infiltrated um, veins and oh it was a mess trying to keep me alive but today I'm here I'm very happy very excited because I survived the ordeal and the minute I came out of the hospital because even when I got out of the hospital the funny thing is when they decided they're going to send me home because I've been there so long they had me sign paperwork to say that I'm going on, on on my free will it was not their consent that type of thing so when I got home they sent um a nurse, a visiting nurse. And by then I had my friends who were nurses and so on from all over came to take care of me. And while I was home, the nurse came, the first day she came, she said, you don't look good. You don't look good. You were in so much pain. I, I mean, I was in a lot of pain and I could not keep anything down. So, she said, I'm going to have to send you back to the hospital. I said, please, give me a chance. Whatever you can do, give me a chance to work this out. I'll be fine. Don't send me back to the hospital. I begged her, literally begged her. She said, okay, what you're going to drink is fennel tea and stuff because I was so gassy. Because any time you've had this abdominal surgery, there's a lot of gas a lot of gas in you and you're just oh burping and i was vomiting i was really really struggling and so i decided okay i'll listen to what she's doing and we did and survived the ordeal i got better and in no time in about six weeks when i went back to the to see the surgeon he was shocked 
he could not believe it was the same person. He literally called a team of medical students to come. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. He literally called, and that's Stene. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correct. He literally called a team of student doctors and said, this woman should not have survived. There's nowhere, medically speaking, she could have survived based on what she's been through. And to see her six weeks later, walking around like nothing happened. From six weeks on, I never stayed down. I was up and about driving, doing everything after. And that has been what's been my drive, my force, my everything behind everything I do. I remember how close I came to dying. I decided I was gonna live and I was gonna live to share. To share what I know, whatever my knowledge is, whatever the Lord has blessed me with, I'm going to live to share. So my recipes are a part of me. They're an extension of the reason why I've been sharing. I've been sharing, this is now 10 years since I have been. Yes, you were close. I'm glad to catch you your life. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. So happy you're here. Thank you for your support. And this is, so my husband, I mean, my son is 12. So this happened 12 years ago. And 10 years ago, this month, is my anniversary when we started the website. 10 years ago, I started Healthier Steps. 10 years ago. So this is 10 years where I've been sharing my recipes to the world and my recipes get over a million hits every month, a million page for more than. And it's growing and growing in everything. It's been like that for years now. Every month, over a million people come for my recipes because my recipes are coming from a place of love of sharing because this life is too short too short not to hold things and i don't want to i didn't want to take anything else to the grave i'm like what i get an, a second chance i'm going to hold back and be selfish with what i have learned no way i am going to share i'm going to give i'm going to love i am and just bless others and so our lives should be that. We should live to give to others, to minister. No matter what careers we're in, you have to think about it. We can reach someone. We can touch someone's life for the better by sharing and by giving of ourselves, whatever it means. And don't give looking for anything in return. It will come. It will come. You will get your blessing back tenfold and more. So we just keep giving. Um, let me see now. It's coming. The curry is almost finished. Um, David? David? Come here. Almost tenfold will bless you. Stene says, I found you from Pinterest a few weeks ago on your channel days later oh i am so happy you found me thank you thank you can you get me a spoon please get me hurry get me a spoon um blessings 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 thank you so much um i am so excited you you found me and just stay tuned my recipes are mostly uh with a jamaican influence with flavors david Thank you, sweetheart. Um, with Jamaican influence, my recipes. So they're very flavorful. And uh, we're, my, the team, our team is built, growing. So right now I have a contributor. And she's a very close friend. And actually two contributors. One is a chef from New York. And she's also Jamaican. And I'm so happy our team is growing. It's been such a blessing having these ladies join the team. And um, Chef Marsha from New York, she's also Jamaican. And also Chef Aisha, and she is from upstate New York, the Catskills. She's joined our team. Thank you, dear, um, as well. And I am just so blessed to have them join our team. And so look out for all those indian vegan recipes and other jamaican recipes 
and it's been such a blessing so stay tuned for many 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 more recipes come because these these ladies are just on fire we're all we're just excited a great team that we have of food that's going to be coming from jamaica and from indian india that authentic indian recipes thank you thank you steady so i'm going to go back and show you it's still not ready but it's coming there i'm going to show you what it's looking like all righty Okay, let's get this down. I have to bear with me. I'm not tech savvy. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't put it in the <laughs> in the in the pot. Okay, let's 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 wait. Let's wait. Let's, let's see. Okay, I can't figure this. Oh, here, here. I think that this is it. Okay. All righty. I think I got it now. Okay. Okay. Am I going too low? all righty all right let's put this back so it looks a little cuter put a, cover all that wire all righty thank you for joining thank you guys i really appreciate your support and i'm just gonna share with you there you see it's there but you know what i'm gonna do so i won't hold up your sunday evening i'm gonna mix i don't have to do it like basically i'll just cook this but it's looking so good I will just cook this until it um, gets thicker. I'll, you can mash to make sure it's thickened. You can literally mash some of the squash, like mash some up. And then as you mash it up, it will help to make the sauce thicker. All right, let's get the fan right here. Put the fan right here, baby. Thank you. I'm coming, I'm almost finished. I'm finished. All right, David? I'm, I'm coming to you, so. So, I can mash, but what I'm gonna do to make life easy and quicker, cause it's looking so good. And you know what would have been nice? If I added some potatoes to this dish, some, you know, chunks of potato, that alone will thicken it to where I want it faster because all I'd have to do is mash some of the potatoes. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna mix some cornstarch with, I mean, I could, like I said, I could wait, but I'm gonna mix some cornstarch and get it to where it's, yeah, I know people are going to say it's not curry so stew, but we can call it stew. Whatever you want. Whatever. Once it tastes good, I don't really care. I'm not going to be concerned about that. I'm coming. So what I have here is some water, and I have this organic cornstarch. It's open. It's from Bad Bread's Milk. Oh, it's gluten-free? Gluten-free cornstarch. All right, so we're going to add a little bit of that, a tablespoon, with the water. I'm going to mix in. As a matter of fact, if you can see, if I was just patient enough, but I know I don't want to keep you guys locked, it's going to thicken. It's, it's actually not bad. It's actually looking good. But I'm going to add it. And then it's going to thicken it faster. Just some more. All right. Oh, that looks good now. And so that will thicken it faster. It smells amazing. I'm just cleaning up. It smells so good, guys. You see that? And that now would be nice to eat with your rice. It'll be nice to eat with, I like it with quinoa. And as a side dish, you're getting all the nutritional benefits that you would from the squashes. All the squash family, they're very good for you. Lots of vitamins, mineral. They have a high water content. So they're hydrating. They're good for the skin. You know, cucumber is good for the skin. They're all good for the skin. And that it is now. Then I'll just add this over some rice for dinner. And what you're going to do is make sure it has enough salt. So you're going to add enough salt to it you're gonna taste it adding up the extra salt so that's what i'm gonna do right now let me taste it and then i might add a little bit more salt these just a little bit more
Alrighty. So I'm using Himalayan. Where is it? Can you see it? Himalayan. I don't want to turn <laughs> Himalayan pink salt. So add in a little of that. And very good now. This is this is where I want it. Very good. Alrighty. And All right, I have these nice bowls. I'm just gonna eat some more like a, like a stew, but this would be just good over rice. All righty. All righty. See? Okay. Let that go and thicken a little bit more. Okay. Alrighty. So there. See. We turn it a little bit more down. A little bit more lower. Alright. And see. Okay, see. So It's hot still, so. Mm. My first time eating it curry, like I said, I grew up where my mom made it with sawfish, and I loved it with the sawfish, but now being vegan, I had to come up with different ways of making it. Um, it looks delicious. I'd been looking for greener, great recipes for the Daniel Fast. You do the Daniel Fast, oh nice. Yeah, check it out, check it out. And sometimes it's just so good to add different vegetables to your diet, you know. And I'm sure you've probably seen it um, in the store and like wondering how can I prepare it. So this is a great way to prepare because it's going to be flavorful. It's delicious. It's tasty. I'm trying to let it cool because I, I, you know, ever have you ever burned your gum? You eat the food that is too hot and then for days it takes off the top layer, the epithelial layer off, the, off your gum and it feels so annoying for days. I hate when I, how that happens. So I'm letting it cool. It's very good. Very good. It melts in your mouth. You know what? Have you ever cooked cucumbers? I know people don't cook cucumber. I, it's, this is great for adding to stews. So this would be great if you add it to, a, like when I'm making my stew, there are times when I just add, it's not popular, but I'll add it with cucumber. It gives you that taste. So it tastes to me almost like I'm eating that. It's very, very delicate, it's soft, it melts in your mouth, and the curry has a nice flavor. One thing is missing, my pepper doesn't have the heat. So if you hot like a pepper with the heat, I would say add some, um, a little pepper, like probably even some cayenne pepper would be good with this, a little splash, if you like the spicy food. One thing I noticed though, the skin is hard. I mean, it's not hard, 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 but if I were to do it again, I'm, it depends if you like for people, some people the texture, they don't like that soft mushy. I don't mind. She, oh, you've never cooked that squash. Okay, I hope you will try it. So, you know that the skin is hardish, like tough, so, one thing you could do probably is peel the skin if you don't like that but i know the skin is where most of the nutrients are so in the vegetable so i don't mind the skin i really don't mind but another thing i'll do to it next to i'll add the potato because it is such a mild flavor it needs a potato that creaminess of that potato to go with it. And you know, like I didn't add coconut milk. The next time I do it, I might add some coconut milk to it.
to give it that more island flavor with the curry. I'm a stickler for coconut milk, so I didn't this time. It tastes good, but for me, it's like it needed that. It needed that, and it needed the potato. But it's a good dish. I'm enjoying it. Still. So, I hope you try it. I'm going to write up the recipe below. And eventually put it on my website. But then because I'm going to have to put it on my website, I have to take, I didn't take photos. So I have to go buy another squash and then do one specifically for my website. For here now, it's different. It's just a live thing I'm doing and it's my first time making it. So it's something I'm going to go do again, specifically for the website where I can have the step-by-step -step with photos and all that. Let me know where you're from, Stenny. Are you in the, here in the States? Hmm. The pepper, that mild pepper, that seasoned pepper, when you bite into it, it makes that, that flavor pops. It's really, really good. Stenny, if you're still on, let me know exactly where in the country you are, if you're in the States or if you're abroad. I'd love to know. Oh. oh, you're in Maryland. So you, you're my neighbor. You're a neighbor when I lived in Virginia. I lived in Virginia for 10, over 10 years. So I was there for a while. So I know Maryland. And I used to. I used to make skincare products. I used to make handmade soaps lotions and i used to sell them at the farmer's market in olney oh you're from liberia nice the free state lovely oh man so you must have a lot of nice dishes mm. liberia has such a strong history um really really strong history i think it was one of the yeah it is is it next to sierra leone am i is it West Africa? Am I right? Very nice. Lots of good cultural stuff there. Mm. Am I right? Is it West Africa? Very nice. Very nice. Mm. Yes, West Africa. A lot of Jamaicans are from that part of Africa. Ghana, Nigeria, Togo, Benin and Togo, Liberia, all along that western coast. A lot of us, our ancestry is from that area. You want to start a website to showcase? Oh, yeah. We got to talk. Oh, yes. I encourage you to do so. I'd love to know more, learn more about your culture and your food. Mm. Mm. Let's keep in touch. Guys, I'm over here eating and I didn't eat the quinoa with it. <laughs> so let's stay in touch. I'm gonna sign off and I thank you once again for staying with me, watching, and everything, I thank you for your feedback. Stenny, let's stay in touch. I want to learn more about food from Liberia. So I want to see that website. And why not start a YouTube channel? Definitely. Thank you. If Where was it? Instagram to you? Connect, connect with me there. Message me. And we can talk further. Anyway, guys. Have an amazing week. Many, many blessings for the week. You all take care and join me soon where I'll do another live. And like I say, I prefer spontaneity. I don't like to pre-plan everything. Like I remember when I first started YouTube video. This is a little joke. My husband gave me a script 
He's like, write it out what you're going to say. I said, oh my gosh, I cannot function like that. If I have to go write what I have to say, I'm not going to do a, a YouTube. I cannot. It's not my nature. I like to talk freely. I like to, if I had to be, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, all that would mess up my head. So I'm here. I just want to be me. I'm me. And I just want to show my personality. I just want to share. I just want to be down to earth. And I don't want any script in my head. I can't function like that. I know some people are good at that. Everybody's different. That's how I look at life. We're all unique. Oh, my Marlene. That's the lady. Marlene McKinney. You're going to check out our site. Marlene, she left New York. Came down to be with... Oh, my gosh. I want to cry. Don't make me tear up. She was there with her family, left New York while I'm in the hospital to be there for my baby. She was one of the many ladies and I really, really appreciate you, love you. And she was the one that went on Facebook and told people to pray for me and she showed up. Guys, go check her out, something better. Go check her out, join her, everything. Anyway, my, my, my quinoa is ready. I love you, Marlene, always will. God bless you all, blessings, blessings. Enjoy the rest of the evening and the weekend. Love you, Marlene. Love you so much. David! I'm sorry, I have to go. <laughs> I love you. I gotta go. My stove is gonna burn. <laughs> I have the quinoa. I'm smelling it. All right, all right. Oh, you end this thing. I can't even figure out how to end it. Oh, that's funny. Uh, my, bye, Marlene. <laughs> I have to take this down. So, okay, there it is. Okay.